All right, this is gonna be not a super long video, maybe 10, 15 minutes long. So this is the lick in question. I did it similar like in the uh, Hughes and Kettner core blade video. And before I get into it, by the way, on the cord blade, there was some information I left out that I found on the website. So according to them, the MIDI cable inside has a phantom power. So that MIDI cable will control your pedal board. So you don't need an extra power cable. It'll control your pedal board or a fractal. So it's very compatible with a fractal FM3, which can control all the effects, the loop, everything in there, um, which makes that even more endless possibilities of everything because of the way that that amp is set up. The other thing is it doesn't need to be a match tube according to some people and what Hughes and Kettner are saying. I haven't tried that, but you could just throw a tube in and it'll bias and they're saying it doesn't matter what kind of tube, which is kind of cool. Um, so there are a couple things like that I didn't know. It also has an external effects loop controller, not the MIDI cable, but an actual foot controller to turn the effects loop on and off. Which is cool because if you're running your MIDI pedal and you can just turn the effects loop on and off with whatever effects you have in there or you can assign it to a similar patch. All right, so here's the lick. Now, um, I have shown this before in some reels. I don't think I've ever shown the lick, but it's an open E on five and eight. I pick only the E, hammer five and eight. And then I hammer, and this is, again, the technique is what you're after. I hammer chords, I crisscross it, I do single notes. Here's the single note version on the third string. So wherever my first finger is hammering, my third string is there. And that's the same with the chords. Those are only on three and four string, uh, the string. In G, I move it around from A, B, E, and up the F sharp to an A. Now, this actual technique was from a song that I had developed back in the 80s in one of these shred songs. Um, I may incorporate it into some of the stuff. I'm actually in my living room. I decided I'll do one more video. My back is out. It's hard for me to stand and sit for a long period of time. And to explain to some of you, they doubled my dose on some of my medication and it's making me ill. So I will be taking that today. And I don't know how long. It so it's getting a little better. So my body is getting used to it. But we'll see, it's not any kind of life-saving, well, I shouldn't say life-saving, because if I don't take it, I could die. It's diabetic medicine. But, so that's the, that's the whole thing. So again. You can hammer chords, you can go through other strings. that's popular that I've done that in the past as well. So the whole thing about this technique is you could play it like me or you can add it at different tempos or create and develop a technique yourself. This is something that I was doing in the 80s um, along with string skipping. I was probably, I had seen that way before a lot of other people and I did get the ideas from guys like Yuli John Roth and some of the other players from back then. And I studied classical flamenco. And the idea was, you know, when I'm doing, uh, like, say, an F sharp here and an A. Uh, playing classical guitar. Let me, let me show you what I mean. So I'm playing a bass note. Uh, filling in the chord. So, that idea filtered into I 
heard something similar to that and that's how I came up with the idea. And then I added the speed and the shred kind of stuff. Now I'm gonna show you guys something else because um, we're only at five minutes. So again, we'll, we'll do another lick. Again, it's a technique you're after and you don't have to play it like me. You can do it bluesy, you can do it jazzy, you can play it metal. So there's a lot of information on here. You don't have to like the way that I play, but the information is valuable. So this one, I'll show it in a basic way. It's a pentatonic A minor. What you're gonna do is you're gonna jump strings. Low E to the a four string. So that's not too hard and that sounded kind of cool on its own. Again, you could apply it very simple. Now the other version of that, again, to give you the idea of how you can reuse the technique is, so you're, you're skipping strings and then going back to the string you skip and playing the whole scale in sequence like that. So you can actually pull off. Now it doesn't sound like a lot and it depends again how you use it. You can use it just to kind of move around. Or you add major scales. That is also the same technique, but on a, a little bit harder version of that because there's more notes, more error, and it's a lot faster. So you can play scales like that, and I do it a lot when I play. It's one of the things that I was creating is playing scales. <laughs> I do it a lot. So these are techniques that you can utilize. Another one that you can do is pull offs with open strings inside scales up high. And it doesn't matter what string you're pulling off to. In the key of G, there's no sharps or flats on the tuning. In the key of A, C, there's no sharps or flats. So, So I use a lot of open string skipping as well, or just open strings in general. And that will help set you up for a lick, such as I was talking about. It's a way to move around and then set yourself up for certain licks. So this. It's a way to move around and it's one of my, I, I call it almost like a, a cheat lick because it helps me to get around. It's one of the trademark things that I do, which I don't explain a lot in my playing. And again, it's time to move the torch to some of you younger cats, as well as older cats that might be out there playing. And you, you're, I'm sure there's a lot of people watching me that can outplay me. But there's, I'll say there's not a lot of players as creative 
as I was. And I was forced to be that way be, being a GIT when you're playing with Paul Gilbert and Jason Becker and Marty Friedman and they're coming up with all these kind of crazy arpeggios and stuff and you're, you're sitting there going... <laughs> you're like, oh, you know, so I can sweep. I just don't do it all the time. So again, I took the idea of an arpeggio and I use it more... <laughs> That's an E minor arpeggio. If you play like... Yeah, then... It, then it sounds more like the arpeggio sweeping thing. But again, I took the technique and made it into something that was useful for me. Whether it's move around, and that's also how I learned some of my arpeggios to be different. Like I play E minor arpeggio in the key of uh, off of a B. And my A minor arpeggio is in off of the E position. But here's the thing. A and E are the perfect resolve. And it's off of the fifth and one of a chord. So that's why I do different arpeggios inside an E position. I play A minor. That's some of the tricks of the trade of the GIT kind of schooling and the thought mentality that went into that. Now there are things that I couldn't play and I showed like pivot, pivot licks like Ingve has a... Now I may do some of that sometimes, but I don't do it a lot. But I might go something like this. So what that is, and I'll do it with it. Playing backwards but open. That open leg. So there were certain things that I couldn't do arpeggio wise that I could do later. And you have to remember, I was one of the younger kids at the time, so it was a little bit harder for me to play some of the licks like Becker was playing. He was phenomenal. Friedman was good too, but Becker was more advanced than a lot of the kids his age at that time, and so was Paul. Paul's a little older than me, and Becker is too. But So I had to create, kind of like Eddie Van Halen. He created the flamenco sound by his ears, and I did the a pivot. So I took that. Open. So there's seven, five open on the four with my pivot done. I'm only picking this one. Now my technique from jumping strings is I can pull off legato wise and you can do that so again it's all about this is all about taking techniques and making it your own Again, you don't have to like the way I play. You can steal ideas. I hope it helps you get more creative. I hope it opens your mind to the possibilities of how you can apply licks, how you, even in songwriting. Again, this one lick right here. Randy Rose kind of did something like that in Steal Away the Night. alter chords you can alter strings you can uh, the possibilities are endless 
There's a bunch of licks in there at the 15 minute mark. Again, thank you everybody for um, subscribing. Um, I'm in my living room. Uh, one of the living rooms, just to give you an idea. Uh, so I have another living room back there. But there's the cord blade and JSX, and there's the other amp that I'm using, and the drums are kind of shut down.